that one fun, wasn't it? There was three. I had the two I saw weren't bucks. It's our last day in Mississippi. I'll spare you guys the boredom of our morning hunt at first light. As Dylan and I went in, sat a spot just down the creek from Catman. We didn't see anything this morning. We didn't even see a squirrel. So we got down at like nine o'clock, drove up the road a ways, and then have been walking and scouting. Dylan and I, how many miles we covered the last few days scouting? Quite a few. Probably 10, 15 miles at least. Yeah. And we just have not found any good fresh sign. We found buck sign and a lot of it, but it was old. We came in here, we crossed this slough back closer towards the vehicle. There's no parking lot or anything on this area. It's kind of obscure and possibly overlooked. And the closer we got back in here to this river, the more diversity and stuff we started running into. See, I don't know, is this privet right here? I think that's what it is. And you can see down low on those branches how everything's nipped off. Yep. And we cut a really fresh big buck track back behind us here, about 100 yards back. There's actually three sloughs that all come together right here. Two of them are dried up, and there's tons of thick cover all the way around them. We spooked a doe and two fawns back there about 300 yards, and they ran straight back in here. That big track goes straight across at the head of this slough, and we've got several big rubs down through here. I mean, it's the best fresh sign that we've found. The terrain's real monotonous. I mean, you're not gonna find very many clusters of sign, like a ton of rubs in one little spot or a bunch of scrapes or whatever. It does exist here, but it's just so monotonous. This looks really good. So we're gonna go back, pick up Catman, and then make a game plan for this afternoon. Ready, Dylan? Yep. What do you think about this spot? You think we kill one here? We're gonna have to, because it's the last day. <laughs> well, uh, we didn't see nothing this morning, but we just found a good spot. Did you? Yeah. I didn't see anything until I got back to the truck. Really? Uh, I got all my stuff and loaded was sitting here, and uh, up on the hill on private, I heard just t -t 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 -t, like a, I thought it was more than one, but it's. This doe came down to the road and she stopped her on the side of the road and looked back up the hill. And then she ran across the road on the public. I was like, huh, some, something like bumped her or something. Uh -huh. 15, 20 minutes later, she pops back out of the woods and goes across the road back on the private. It's just real, everything's real scattered with the fresh sign. Nothing, like there's no wallered out trails. Right, I didn't see anything like that back there either, but we found two or three rubs that were really fresh a couple sets of big tracks that are really fresh. Is that I'll all spook, swamp? What is all that? That's all dried up slough. No kidding, it's dry. Uh -huh. I assume that was all water. No, a lot of it is. You gonna walk in from here this afternoon? Yeah, probably so. Or you can go in there and hunt that spot, I don't care. We gotta go up there where that privet bush is at and then straight in. That's the end of that slough. We need to start being quiet now. Catman should be coming around the river that way, about 500 yards that direction, to hunt the upper end of the slough. scouting we came back in and, and so far it looks perfect in here like this is the most optimistic I've been on this trip I think our wind is coming out of these dried up sloughs and going into this one over my right shoulder that's full of water there's a bunch of horsetail grass snake grass or whatever it's called down here behind us it's really really thick and I don't see many trails going through it all the trails go right around in front of it 
right here in front of the tree. I think we're in a good spot for tonight. This area is kind of hard to access. It was a long walk getting back through here. Haven't seen any other boot tracks or any other sign of hunters. And nothing but deer sign. The further we got back here, the more sign we ran into. Catman is somewhere that direction. Jake and Ted and Lee are somewhere that direction a ways. We're just in the middle of this massive river bottom down here. Mississippi. We saw those four does in the whole evening. They were acting like they were getting chased. And about five minutes ago, I heard a grunt up in those woods. I'm positive that's what it was. Never came down here. Almost got a shot at one of those does. They were just a little bit too far. They were 35 yards and on pins and needles. And I wasn't going to try to force one through there. These deer are just really flighty and they're, they're smaller, more agile than the deer up north that we're used to hunting. And those deer can move a ton at the sound of the shot at 30 yards. These things I would expect can do even more. We're gonna go ahead and climb down, go back and catch up with Catman and Jake and Ted. Go ahead, Ted, start it out. Well, Jake's 0 for 3 on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good way, to, good way to start 2020. <laughs> That's oh. it for Mississippi, though. For us, Lee's probably going to go go out and kill a buck in the next couple of days. Maybe. And I, think, <laughs> I think we're going to get, I think we'll have some more flood water next week, the way the weather forecast looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you say it's better, you think it's better hunting when it's flooded. So. Mm -hmm. That, well, that area that Does I. Does it just I concentrate the deer, you think? Yeah, I think so. Uh, that would make yeah. sense. Yeah. It's kind of what we saw in Michigan, too. Yeah. It was really comparable, actually, but the water just. I mean, it, it was surprising how fast the water levels went back down. Right, right. I would say the difference in, because Michigan and Mississippi are both tough states, the particular area we're hunting down here doesn't seem like there's near as many deer 
as there is in Michigan. No. Like Michigan wasn't hard to find like fresh sign and stuff. No. But down here it's just scattered. You know? I mean Yes, that, there's a good number of deer, but like I couldn't find like a good heavy worn out trail. No. There'd be like every trail that I found would have like one or two sets of tracks and then there would be tracks scattered everywhere. And, and that's what Lee said when we yeah. got here. He's like, y'all aren't going to see the type of sign that you would up in the Midwest. Even even yeah. in Tennessee, where I usually hunt, it, it was just way more scattered than what I'm used to. It's kind of just flat river bottom. And it's thick, but it's not too thick where they can't just travel wherever they want. Right, you know? they, it's so flat and everything's so monotonous that they just don't seem to have to follow a mm -hmm. you know, particular trail. And if you do see a trail, it's likely from... But, 30 hogs that just walked through. But there yeah, definitely right. was some areas that we were like, every day we would kick up deer. Mm -hmm. So there was like specific bedding areas that if mm -hmm. you wanted to, I think you could set up over those if we have more time to figure that out. Like I'd, I'd like to come watch. back here. They're still bedding in transitions and edge transitions, watching access and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, frequently. I mean, that's where what we saw anyway, the last few days walking miles and miles through this stuff well and, and another common thing was i mean most places we go if you got to go across water if there's something really tough to get across or if you got to get creative to get to a place there's going to be deer and that's i mean that's right. the same here mm -hmm. yeah and by the road yep. cat saw that great First big buck how far from the road were you i was about 50 60 yards off the road and the buck was about uh 60 yards past that so i mean he was within 150 of the road but that same exact spot where I climbed that morning, the evening before, like right when I got down here, I went to scout in there and turned into still hunt because there was two younger deer that were bedded on the embankment of that slough within 50 yards of the road. They were just bedded up on a little mound in some brush, just what I guess watching the road in wide open hardwoods. Mm. And then that buck came out of just parallel to the slough, just came down, fed around for a while, and then went back the way he came. No, no, like rhyme or reason to why he did it. The only, the only pattern I noticed was that they seemed to follow the contour of the water. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's about the only thing to go off of, but still nothing to really neck down the movement anywhere. Yeah. Would you say you're like you're just as well off just going in the woods and picking a tree? I, and I really believe that. I, I didn't say that as a joke. I really believe it. The area that we hunted this evening, I've, I think coincidentally seen deer in that one area a lot. Adrian's deer was a good example. I I walked in and I put him right on the water line. We had to paddle through 300 yards yeah, of water. Yeah, if you were to see that tree, it's like, yeah, it's same same exact stuff yeah. for 150 yeah. yards around. It's just like he was and, in the right tree. And I yep. saw five bucks, and including the one that he shot, and he was 100 yards from me, and he only saw the one, you know, that, that came by him. I'm good But you sit, you do that long enough, and eventually one comes right by that's right I, I found a good bit of fresh sign like where the flood had washed the dirt out and you could see fresh tracks uh -huh. and i mean i found a lot of it over the past few days but nothing was concentrated it was just scattered out and a lot of it was near the road yeah and then this afternoon where where we all hunted along that river i was along the river and y'all were further back in uh i was around a kudzu patch and i was on the wrong side of it if i'd been on the other side of it i probably would have killed something but there were still tracks just scattered, no, nothing concentrated, just fresh tracks kind of scattered everywhere. You've killed a bunch of nice bucks down here with a bow, and I'm just assuming that a lot of that is due to patience and just putting as much time in out there as you can. That's right. I mean, I I probably bow hunt here more than anyone does. She gets to, but I can't quite get her in the right tree. Either. And she's a trophy hunter, I think. <laughs> she won't shoot the 15-inch eight eight points that everyone else shoots during the muzzleloader season. Uh, heck, I would have loved it if she had a shot at one of those. The water being up was bad timing for someone new coming here. Mm -hmm. um, it, especially in the, on the south end, with that one area being closed, it kind of... I'm assuming that they probably go into there and kind of treat that as a safe haven once mm -hmm. there's no pressure on it. Well, like we were talking about a while ago, uh, last year in Alabama, you all, by the end of the trip, you all were finally starting to put some stuff together. Yeah, yeah. we were getting finding good sign, like what good sign was. Right. Yeah. It was the same thing, deer but, and hog sign. And but it took you a week to get there. Yeah. You know, and this is that's kind of the same deal for at least us on this trip. 
it's like it's almost I like finally a, found something today that yeah. I'm like get more confidence you get in. excited about going yeah in. i was excited to go in this evening i was like we got mm -hmm. a good chance of seeing some deer and probably seeing a buck mm -hmm. but you know it's so monotonous through there that we could have went a mile further and who knows what's back there right and we just started getting into it so i mean if you had another couple two or three days you could hunt that area we hunted tonight and then just stage hunt in a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and probably get in some bucks eventually i would think but just needed to find it a couple days sooner it took yeah. us a while to get there yeah and it's, thanks to lee and rusty for letting us stay in a safe man, place I, and have absolutely food. i love it <laughs> I, w I wish you guys didn't have to leave i know you've got another good trip coming yeah up, i right? wish we had another five six days and yeah, we'll we'll bribe you guys to come back next time <laughs> hey, man, we'll, have, we'll be ready to ready to come down and also armed also, with more knowledge check out catman's channel subscribe to it he's got a lot of cool videos would you like to turkey and deer hunt with Catman at least once a year. Yeah, whenever we can. <laughs> uh, we'll be turkey hunting real soon, Cat. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I heard those spring peepers the other day. They started firing up. All I could think about was turkeys. Oh, yeah. And I saw off. three gobblers the other day. I got to tell you where they're at. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Well, that's it for Mississippi, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. We got our butts whipped, but we had a good time. We'll see you on the next video. Right, Ted? Right. Yeah, I think Greg might shoot a buck on the next video, so that might be cool. <laughs> Greg might just <laughs> shoot one. If you want to see something die, stick around. Might shoot, a buck that, <laughs> might shoot a buck that's already been shot by another THP member this year. Who yeah. knows? I don't know. It's right by this road that we just walked right by. A couple years old, probably.